Good evening, folks. Last night, we went over the number one request after the Safe Zones video to better explain the ending maps. Here, we will go over four other items. Some of those will touch on the ending maps, including a bit more on New Mew, New Atlantis, and the New Valley of the Sun. Whether or not you think the largest part of the 12,000-year cycle disasters is coming to Earth, not even mainstream scientists deny that the sun is going to take out global power someday, and it won't be coming back on. And with the weakening magnetic field right now, the prospects for that are much higher. This itself is a major disaster scenario, and it brings up a question from many of you about the nuclear reactors. There are a few things to consider here, but first, a lot of those are going to get hit by the waters. The crumbling of the buildings will smash everything, including the rods, which means there won't be the requisite material touching each other for criticality. Covered in mud, crushed, or at the bottom of the sea, what's left isn't exactly your best friend, but it also isn't the end-all of survival discussion. One of the fathers of suspicious observerdom, government dissidentism in the nuclear age, this man was in it, all the way, and if Galen Windsor doesn't make you question the story you think you know about nuclear danger, I'll wonder if your mind is still open at all. My mind worries not about the nuclear problem. And by the way, the number one way to break down nuclear products is electric current and plasma. We'll have plenty of both around in this event. And the video is called The Nuclear Scare Scam. It is linked for you in the resources below this video. Somehow, up next is one I suppose I need to be happy to keep repeating. Despite how many times I point to the disaster series, people always come back and ask how we know what the tilt of Earth will be and when will this happen. Yes, both of those are answered to our fullest extent in the disaster series, but we'll do it again, the latter first. We know there is a cycle of about 12,000 years, a major biosphere hit with a magnetic excursion of Earth. Whatever the cycle timeline is exactly, we're exactly due according to the sediment and the corings, and what do you know? Earth's magnetic field began weakening quickly in 1859, lost 10% by 2000, upgraded to 15% in only 2010, the report by the ESA. And while no new percentages have been given, we know there was a major acceleration of that shift again in 2017, centered on the Pacific sector. The math suggests that these accelerations will lead to a reversal in the 2030s or 2040s. Until then, we sniff out their every update. We watch the space weather, lightning, and the animals best we can. As for how we know the tilt of Earth, that this is what causes the cyclical deluge evidenced all across the world. Amazingly, the 90-degree tilt and tilt-back scenario goes back hundreds of years to some of the earliest catastrophes, but got its first scientific treatment in the middle of the 1900s. First, Einstein concluded that the Greenland ice weight and the counter on the West Antarctic ice shelf wanted to get to the equator to maintain Earth's external balance, but that the low-velocity zone was stuck, and ice accumulation alone could not release it. We now know that the sun is what can trigger massive currents through that area and unlock the crust. And all at the same time, while Chan Thomas was starting to find the evidence that the new pole positions were going to be near the current magnetic anomalies, the Bermuda Triangle and South Atlantic Anomaly on one side, and the Dragon's Triangle and powerful South Magnetic Pole on the other. It just so happens, those new pole positions, the Bay of Bengal in Brazil, are roughly the pole positions if you move Greenland and West Antarctica to the equator. Then, as if we needed another coincidence, the magnetic poles are not shifting on opposite sides of the planet. They are on a collision course for the Bay of Bengal, with the other side of the world being, you guessed it, northern South America. When you add in Major White's team finding the alternating tropical and polar fossils in the Arctic, the tree fossils in Sweden with no rings, even the dinosaur nest in the Arctic that is making them ask if dinos were actually warm-blooded. No. The answer to all of those is the 90-degree tilt and tilt back. The first catastrophes, Einstein, Chan Thomas's pole positions, the actual observed magnetic pole movement, the physical evidence unearthed across the world. That's how we know. Next, Let's go over our top three safe zones, and before we begin, it is worth noting that places in Mongolia may end up okay, but are any of you going to move there right now? No? Okay, let's start with New Mew. Mew is a large topic we can't get into right now, apart from it was a land of old in this area that sank into the sea. It's an appropriate name for what I imagine is the best place to be on the Australian continent, 
The waves will want to go around the high ground there. The post-tilt climate and current climate are darn acceptable, and there are rural areas here away from high population. Yes, hail and the New Zealand volcanic emissions are likely to be an issue, but issues are going to be everywhere. If this is within your means, I would never say it's a bad decision. And FYI, for those who are thinking, what about New Lemuria? Sadly, that is the new North Pole and is unlikely to be very friendly for the next 12,000 years. Up next, New Atlantis, which I'm sure needs no explanation. Most of Europe is highly dense in population. The volcanoes scare me a good bit, and the waves will assault the coasts pretty well. The Alps are great while you have electricity, so we go to Spain and perhaps a bit of France as well. The high country for sure. Excellent position after the tilt. Acceptable climate now. Last but not least, the new Valley of the Sun. Running from near Denver down past Colorado Springs, Los Alamos, Albuquerque, the Sierra Diablo Mountains where Jeff Bezos' bug out facility is located, and into Mexico. It includes mountainous areas just off the eastern range as well. First and foremost, no, Yellowstone is not a concern. I have done special videos on this, interviews, the lot, but what it boils down to is Yellowstone is broken. It can't build pressure effectively anymore. No other volcano boasts the geysers, quakes, and geothermal release that Yellowstone does. It has no way to build up to that big explosion, especially since it is now known to be cut off and not connected to the LLSVPs below. It can erupt effusively, like Hawaii, but not explosively, at least not for millennia and millennia. The new Valley of the Sun has not one climate, but about three within a day's walk of every point in the area. The wave from the Gulf will struggle to climb the elevation perpendicularly to its inertial path northward. The post-tilt climate is slightly better than it is right now, and the west is still the west. Lots of open space out here. The last thing I want to mention today is attitude, and forgive me for feeling qualified to diagnose and correct the need for an attitude adjustment within the community. If you don't think you want to be alive after this event, fine, but there's no need to share your depressing stance with those who want to save themselves and the ones they love. The world's doing enough of that negativity every single day. If you think that taking a step back is just too unbearable for you, the conditions after the catastrophe, perhaps think instead of it like the universe, God, or fate calling you to play. This is the Super Bowl of Earth's cosmic situation, and it doesn't come around every day. You are being called to the playing field. Make no mistake, we do need NPCs in the stands and watching from their couches, but how do you say no to the universe, God, or fate? Where's my helmet? Someone blow the whistle. Many of us were literally born for this, and we've known it our entire lives. I'll see you in the morning for the daily update. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.